All right, welcome to One Eye on the Page. This is Scott. It is Saturday, May 27th. This is just going to be a real quick entry. I got a little bit of reading done on uh, Sense and Sensibility today. This week is going to be a little bit different as far as the vlog goes. I am going to talk about what I read but I'm also getting ready to go on vacation. So also what I will be doing is talking about what I plan to read on vacation this week. Uh, I might mention other things that I plan to read in June, but again, with TBR, it's never going to be a real big thing for me. So I may just muse and seriously, you weren't even anywhere near me. <laughs> I will uh, come back tomorrow and give you a little bit longer entry just talking about what I plan to read. Do you want to say anything, bud? Nope. All right. So let's get rolling. It is Sunday, May 28th. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm reading. I, I won't go into it too much because of stuff that I have been reading. I am about three quarters of the way through Steinbeck's Tortilla Flat. I might finish it today. I'll probably finish it by tomorrow. I won't go into it too much until I finish it because I've talked about it a little bit already and I'll I'll give you my assessment tomorrow for that. I <laughs> Bye Ron. I downloaded the complete short stories of Guy de Maupassant, so that I have it both in Kindle and audiobook form. So I have listened to three short stories already today. The first volume is 12 stories long, partially through the first story. I will probably complete it before the end of the month, as I had said before. I don't know if I'm going to finish Spoon River Anthology before, but I will try. And the other book I am reading is Sense and Sensibility, also on audiobook. And I actually have it in physical form also by Jane Austen. I don't see myself finishing that before the end of the month because I'm trying to listen to the short story collection. So... Uh, what I also wanted to do today was talk about some books that I plan to read and that I know that I am going to read. So I, I have several books that I am bringing with me on vacation. I'm going to be gone for about a week. I have books that I will read on the, the plane, trip, plane trips there and back and hopefully while I'm on vacation. Three of these books are uh, romance novels because I'm... Um, doing my video about five romance novels I read in a genre that I don't usually read in. So the first one is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Uh, I've seen Emily Henry as a pretty big name in the romance novel uh, department. As you may know, if you watch any of my uh, Stephen King videos, if, if there's a book that has to do with writing itself, chances are I'm, I'm gonna like it. So I picked Book Lovers for that reason. Mainly, it looks pretty much like it's gonna be a rival's turn to lovers. The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walther. Didn't know much about this. I just picked it up mainly because I kind of did a random shot and picked it up. And... Sally Thorne's The Hating Game. Another uh, apparently rivals or enemies turned to lover story. And of course, uh, Sally Thorne is an author who is known for romances. This one seems a little bit shorter. So I have looked at these. The fonts seem larger in all of them. So I, I, I expect to finish at least two of these books on vacation. We shall see if that actually happens. I, I do know that I have been told, contrary to how I usually do vacations, that we can't start 
going immediately in the morning. I often wake up sometime between 4 and 5.30, and I've been told people may not want to do things till like 9 o'clock, so I may have some time there. So I may get some reading out. We also have a, a, uh, a rooftop access that looks on the ocean, so I may go up there and watch the sunrise and, and read a book. One more thing. By B.J. Novak. If you don't know, B.J. Novak is uh, the the actor from The Office. I have gotten this book for Christmas. I've actually gotten it twice. Sorry, kiddo, I didn't let you know that I already had the book. I've I have not read it yet, and I'm a little bit hesitant because maybe just a little bit prejudice, kind of expecting a story collection from an actor to perhaps be a little pretentious. Hope I'm wrong. I'm going to give it a chance. And stories, which I assume they're actually short stories. Again, I know nothing about this except it's the actor from The Office. But stories are pretty easy to generally read one and then set it aside and come back later. Don't expect to finish this on the trip, but I expect to get a few stories out, at least while we're on the trip. And speaking of stories, and I know this is a strange one for uh, a summer vacation, but Ghost of Christmas Pass, which is a short story collection with authors such as Neil Gaiman, Kelly Link, M.R. James, and a few others, several others, actually. I, I need to read some of my Christmas books. Every Christmas Eve, we have a Christmas Eve stocking in which uh, the person gets pajamas for that night, a mug, and a Christmas-themed book. Generally, when I was younger and I wasn't the man in charge of Christmas, the Christmas Eve book would be the thing to occupy you while you're waiting for Santa Claus to come. Because you, and by you I mean me, don't sleep Christmas Eve. I do sleep Christmas Eve now, but I, I still wake up rather early. But because I have so much stuff to do Christmas Eve, helping Santa get presents put out, prepping uh, food for Christmas dinner the next day, prepping Christmas breakfast, I don't actually get any time to read the Christmas books on Christmas Eve. So I have many Christmas books that I have not read yet. And one of my unspoken goals, unspoken until now, is that I'm going to be reading, hopefully, several of my Christmas books. So Again, this is a short one. It's 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 less than 300 pages. I think how many stories does it have? So it's less than 300 pages. It's got 13 short stories. Another one, I don't expect to finish it on vacation, but I do expect to knock a few of the stories out. So those are books that I'm going to read on vacation. Now, I have other books that I plan on reading in June. Will I? Some of them, yes, I will. I have to. But other ones, who knows? Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, which I got because even though I don't think that it, it it's a one-to-one -one comparison, it made me think of The Cutting Edge, which is one of my favorite guilty pleasure movies. Uh, of course, the, the hockey player and the figure skating here are, I believe, in college, unlike uh, in The Cutting Edge. But, and this is also my final romance novel to be read for the video I have going. I would like to get it read in June. I don't know if I will. Perhaps after reading those three other romance novels, I may need a break. I am, again, I'm also reading Sense and Sensibility, which obviously has romance elements in it. I hope to, don't know if I will. I also, as I said, I have the complete short stories of Guy de Maupassant, there are 13 volumes in that. So after I finish the first one, I will move on to the second one again. I, I will probably finish 
another volume by the end of June. One book I do need to read, not this book, because this is a rather large book, the most of P.G. Woodhouse by P.G. Woodhouse, but also in this book is the novel Quick Service. It's the only place that I know of that that novel is available. It's also available on audiobook, and that, that's where I read it first. But Quick Service is the next book that that Robin and I are going to be doing for our Woodhouse podcast. We are doing the inevitable Jeeves later this week. And so some point in June, we're going to do our next one, which is Quick Service. So I, I, that's one novel that I have read. I like it, but I want to take notes on it and stuff and make sure that, you know, I'm good to go. Other than that, I don't really have anything planned for June. Those books, plus Sense and Sensibility, that's nine books. So even though I don't have a TBR, I sort of have a TBR. I will probably read more than nine books, especially since my kid is going to spend uh, the summer at their mom. So I, I have more time. I don't have to take the trip to school every day. So we shall see. I also plan to get more stuff done in the house. So it's a balancing act. It looks like I'm going to finish like 13 or 14 books in May. I wouldn't be surprised if I finished somewhere between 12 and 14 in June. That is the vlog for today. Again, this is going to be a, a short week. This is going to end on Thursday for me so that I can edit it on Friday and have it ready to go for the next week. So until tomorrow, it is Monday, May 29th. Today's entry is not going to be very long. I have read a little bit further. I've finished almost the short stories in volume one of the collected short stories by Guy de Maupassant. Pretty close on the pronunciation there, so I'm going to say good for me. I have one more story, plus I need to finish the novella. So I should do that by tomorrow. I also have about 40 more pages of Steinbeck's Tortilla Flat, which I should finish by tomorrow. So the only thing that I really have to worry about is Spoon River Anthology. So I should have those two books finished tomorrow, and I have, will have time to concentrate on Spoon River Anthology, which I really want to finish before the end of the month. So that's where I'm at right now. I am going to go mow the lawn, which is why I'm doing the video now, because you probably don't want to see me after I've sweated up a little bit. And then I'm going to be reading for the rest of the night. So I will see you tomorrow. Hi, it is Tuesday, May 30th. I did finish... Steinbeck's Tortilla Flats, and Guy de Maupassant's uh, first volume of short stories. So I'm going to get into those in just a second, but I just want to mention that I also am roughly 40% of the way through Spoon River Anthology. I am basically reading several poems, which they're all very short, every hour or so. So I believe that I will be finished by tomorrow so that I will have read everything that I originally said I was probably going to read in May, plus two extra books. So, Steinbeck's Tortilla Flat. It is a strange novel. I honestly have to say, I haven't heard of the novel much before now i did have the four complete novels in here and i have heard of the other three novels and i've i've read the grapes wrath and of mice and men i haven't read cannery row yet um, obviously i knew tortilla flat existed because it's right there but i had not heard anything about it i've already talked before about how steinbeck said it was his sort of his American version of the Knights of the Round Table. I get that. 
I don't particularly care for it much. This did come across as using a set of characters to tell multiple short stories, which the short stories by themselves were fine. It's just I don't think that the novel came together as a cohesive whole. The sum of the parts weren't as good as the individual parts, I don't think. I believe a large part of that is due to the fact that the characters don't really stand out. Not stand out. I don't think, one, I don't particularly think they're likable, but that doesn't stop me from caring about a character. But I don't think that I can really empathize with them or sympathize with them much because they don't have any goals in life and i don't mean like go to college and get a degree or get a job or write a novel or become a famous painter i mean to get married to fall in love to do anything besides just drink and steal and fight and go to jail. There's a reason I locked that door, Wash. Stay out. I understand, of course, that there are novels that have characters like this, which are good, but Tortilla Flat just didn't do anything for me. And it's not like Steinbeck can't write characters who I can't empathize with. The Grapes of Wrath is people just going from one place to another, and I cared about them greatly. And same with Of Mice and Men. Not that those two guys particularly had any great goals besides, you know, getting to the next day. But I just wasn't able to in Danny this somewhat the main character of the novel just I just found myself rolling my eyes at him a lot and where he ended up at the end of the novel I just was like why so I mean Steinbeck is a great writer and there's great writing in here but the the use of the archaic dialogue and deciding to somewhat frame it after Knights of the Round Table, it just didn't work for me. So I believe for this one, I'm going to give it three stars. It could almost fall a little bit below that, but I think it's just enough to get three stars. Now I have the collected short stories of Guy de Maupassant, uh, Volume 1, which is, I believe it was like 13 stories, of which Bordy Swift, the novella, uh, is by far the longest. I said that it took like 90 minutes of audiobook. It's also probably the, the best story of the collection about a group of French people traveling, and this is during the Franco-Prussian War, which didn't last a particularly long time, less than a year in 1870 to 1871. But Maupassant was around 20 and actually was in, volunteered for it for the time that it was. So pretty much all the short stories in this collection focus on the Franco-Prussian War. I got off the cat in. All right, I'm talking about literature and shit, dude all focused on the Franco-Prussian War. Uh, the first story, Don't Touch That, is by far the best. The uh, Bold of Swift is a courtesan traveling with these other people, and they get stopped by Prussians, and they basically stay at an inn for several days because the officer in charge, a Prussian there, uh, will not let them leave until she sleeps with him. And at first, the other travelers are, you know, we, we stand behind you and 
strength. But as their inconvenience, they start to put some psychological pressure on her to sleep with him. And when she finally does, they essentially ostracize her. And she had, when they were traveling, had let them eat her food because she was the only one who had thought to bring food with her. And then when they were leaving the inn, she was a bit traumatized by doing what she had to do. She forgot to bring food and none of them gave her any food. So it's a very good story. I'm trying to remember the other short stories. Most of them were very short. I I came to this author because I had read that Joe Hill had said uh, that he was his favorite short story writer. So that's, I had not heard of him before. All these stories have brought the human condition and, you know, obviously about the Franco-Prussian War. And if, if I could say anything negative about them is that the, the Prussians are all caricatures of a sort, stereotypes. They don't, you know, whereas the, the French are brave if also somehow come to a tragic ending. The Prussians are all basically brutes. Many of the stories talk about the tragedy of war and its result on not only soldiers but civilians and also some of the futility of war and the small the resistances that common people put up although i am thinking of that there is at least one short story in there which i thought of as a victory and i believe it was titled mademoiselle fifi which Mademoiselle Fifi is actually the name of a Prussian soldier or a nickname of a Prussian soldier. And uh, the girl in there, Rachel, is probably one of the few characters in this collection that comes out well at the end of it. If you're looking for happy endings, you're not going to find many of them in these short stories. I'm going to assume and I could be wrong, that that's probably also true for the other volumes. There's 13 volumes in all. So I'm going to give this a four out of five stars. I may come back to it later and possibly update it up to 4.5. Some of the stories were just, they were so short. And I feel, and I could be looking at this th from my modern perspective, where I have short stories that are like 30, 40 pages long, and I don't know how long some of these short stories are, but one of them was eight minutes on audiobook. So I got to imagine that's what, three, four, maybe five pages? So that could just be my... That's not how I see short stories. I am glad to finish both those books. I will obviously definitely be reading more of the short stories. I will probably pick up Steinbeck again, probably Cannery Row. And I've never read East of Eden either, so I, I won't steamroll through his catalog like I have with other authors, but I, I may eventually get there. So that's it for today, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hi, it is Wednesday, May 31st. I have finished Spoon River Anthology. I had to take one of the dogs to get shots today, so I actually downloaded the audiobook, which was free, and listened to a large portion of it there. I don't think if I hadn't downloaded the audiobook that I would have finished it today, but I did. It's poetry, and I've stated before that I'm not much of a poetry person. I have my selected favorites that I like, and then if I do read poetry, it is a bit strenuous for me. It takes a long time for me to finish. So for me to have finished this book in this short time is, is pretty good.
I, I do like the interconnected tales in it. It's, I believe I explained it before, but uh, basically it's people who have died in Spoon River and it tells, you know, often how they died or how they lived or what was hiding behind the surface of who they are. And it was really interesting to see what one person would say and then another person come after them or many people after them and give a different spin on it. I would have enjoyed this a lot more if it had been written as a a collection of short stories, but it was still very enjoyable as poems. So if you're into poetry, definitely check this out. It is free verse. I don't know how people feel. I'm fine with it. I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a, a I'm going to give it a 3.5. It's probably leaning more towards 3.25. And again, that's mainly because poetry isn't usually my jam. So that's pretty much all I have for today. I will do another entry tomorrow it's probably going to be pretty short because i won't likely be reading much of anything except i may listen to sense and sensibility if i drive anywhere other than that i'm i'm pretty much saving books for the uh the trip so i will uh talk to you tomorrow Mm. Hey, it's June 1st. Uh, Just a quick update. I've read a little bit more in Sense and Sensibility, but I have a lot of stuff to do for packing today, so I'm not going to be reading anymore, so I thought I'd just go ahead and end it now. Um, Next week's vlog is going to look a little bit different because I will be on vacation. Lots of videos of the ocean and probably not so much about me reading books, but hopefully some. So that is it for this week. Please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you again next week.